What's going on, smart people? As you can see, I finally got my new whiteboard put up. I say finally as if I didn't just get it yesterday, but I feel like playing with it. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to convert a Lagrangian and Cartesian coordinates into its associated Hamiltonian. We're going to assume that Lagrangian depends on some generalized position, some generalized velocity, maybe some explicit time dependence if we're feeling crazy, and the Hamiltonian will depend on generalized position, generalized momentum, and maybe some time dependence. Let's, let's put that on the whiteboard. Okay, so let's say that L depends on Q comma Q dot comma maybe T, and H depends on Q comma P comma T. So the trick here is to mine your P's and Q dots. Uh, the connection between the two is going to be a Legendre transform that transforms this Q dot into a P, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's assume we're dealing with a, with a conservative force, which means that our Lagrangian is nice and can be written in terms of the difference between some kinetic and some potential energy. We're also going to assume that the Lagrangian's kinetic energy can be written of the form 1 half mv squared, and we'll keep the, the potential just a function of x, y, and z, which means that we're choosing our generalized coordinates to be x, y, and z. That means that we don't want this v to be hanging around, we want it in terms of the time derivative of our generalized coordinates, which means time derivatives of x, y, z, x dots, y dots, and z dots. So let's go ahead and expand this real quick, which tells us that this can be written as m over 2 x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared minus v of x, y, and z. Cool. Moving on. Next, what we want to do is we want to find an expression, an equation, for the generalized momentum. Now, luckily we already know what that is. The generalized momentum is the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized velocity. Let's call it an i. We'll look at the i-th component. Okay? Uh, so that means that px, for example, is equal to the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. And that means that if we're looking at this as its own variable, the 2 comes down, it's just power rule. That makes this, that makes the x component of the generalized momentum equal to m x dot. The y component is equal to dl dy dot, which is equal to m y dot. Py, or pz, sorry, is equal to dl d z dot, which is equal to m z dot. And the reason we can do this is we assume that the position and the generalized velocity are independent variables, which means when that ddt uh, attacks this potential here, that goes away. Or sorry, not when that ddt, when that ddx dot attacks this potential, it goes away because x dot is independent and x is independent of x dot. There we go, it works. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and write down what the expression is for a, a regular Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian as a function of q comma p comma maybe some t is equal to the sum over i of pi qi, so it's like a dot product, uh, minus the Lagrangian as a function of q, um, we'll write q dot, okay. Don't let this fool you. We see QIs, this should actually be a QI dot, you didn't say anything. Um, so this is a Q dot, it's momentum times generalized velocity. Uh, but we see this generalized velocity, but we don't actually want it to be a function of that. Well, actually it can't be, right? Because we're explicitly saying H only depends on Q, P, and T. There's no room for Q dots. Well, that's fine. What we can do here is we can solve for our Q dots in terms of P. So if we do that, what we get is that x dot is equal to px over m. Similarly, y dot is equal to py over m. And z dot is equal to pz over m. Cool. So now every time we see these dots in here, we can just substitute in our associated uh, velocity in terms of the momentum. Now let's do that. So that tells us that h is equal to pi qi. So the first one, our pi, is going to be px 
times qi x, which is going to be px over m, plus the next one over, so that's going to be py times py over m, plus pz, pz over m. Okay, uh, do I have room for this? I'm going to make there be room. Minus the Lagrangian. Now, the same thing goes with the Lagrangian. Uh, here, we said that it's x dot plus y dot squared plus z dot squared, which means that we're going to be substituting in x dots in terms of our, our, in terms of our momentum again. Okay, so this is minus m over 2. x dot squared is just going to be px squared over m squared. px squared over m squared plus and then the same thing goes for these ones. So we got py squared over m squared plus pz squared over m squared. And then minus our potential. Well, actually, it's minus minus our potential, which makes it plus our v of x, y, z. All right, now let's get all the dust to settle. So this tells us that h is equal to px squared over m plus py squared over m plus pz squared over m. I'm going to show you how to write this in a more compact way at the very end because this is a little annoying. Uh, one of these factors of m is going to cancel, so this is minus px squared over 2m minus py squared over 2m minus pz squared over 2m plus v of x, y, and z. Now, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half, which tells us that px squared over m minus px squared over 2m is just px squared over 2m. So we can write all of this as, let's just factor out the 1 over 2m. That's going to be the same case for x, y, and z. It's going to be px squared plus py squared plus pz squared plus our potential. Okay? And to write this in a bit more compact notation, we can write h equal to a sum over i, with i going from 1 to 3. So i equal 1 corresponds to the x component of whatever I'm about to write. i equals 2 is the y component. i equals 3 is the z component of p squared i over 2m. Okay, and then just plus our potential. There we have our Hamiltonian converted from our Lagrangian. Hell yeah. Now, I don't think this blew anyone's mind. This was supposed to be a relatively easy video for people to understand. It's converting something with well-established rules into something else with equally well-established rules. Um, something that would have been a bit more complicated, I'm going to erase this one for just some room, is if we were working in a different coordinate system, like if we were to have like cylindrical co coordinates where x is equal to r cosine phi or something like that, uh, the thing that would make this a little bit more involved is when it comes to calculating these time derivatives because x dot would equal dx dr, whoops, dr, dr dt plus dx d phi, d phi, dt. So when you start working in different coordinate systems, our generalized velocities and then our generalized momenta become a little bit more complicated. And that's not something I wanted to do in this video because I wasn't sure, one, if people cared to see that. So if that is something you would like to see, is say maybe doing the same thing, but in maybe cylindrical coordinates or spherical coordinates, let me know in the comments section if you do. Also let me know in the comments section if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you guys there.